Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Faye Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and I would like to show you what I got at the Scholastic Warehouse sale this year. Now, unless you're affiliated with the school system, you may not be aware that every year in May, the Scholastic Company opens up their warehouses for people who are affiliated with schools to come in and shop. Now, I happen to be a school volunteer. I have been since my oldest was in kindergarten and now she's 15. And so I've had an opportunity to go to the big warehouse sale four times. Now Scholastic offers two different types of warehouse sales. One type of sale is at an actual warehouse and then another type of sale they still call it a warehouse sale but it's in a satellite location. For areas that may not be within close driving distance to a warehouse they will take a larger amount of books than is usually at a school book fair and go to another location so that you can come there and shop and you have the same prices and deals that you would get if you went to the actual warehouse. Now I have been to one of the satellite sales and I did not find it as enjoyable as going to the actual warehouse. So uh, I live kind of in the middle where I could go to a satellite sale or I can go to the actual warehouse. It's about a it takes me a little over an hour to get there, uh, more if traffic, uh, to the actual warehouse, but it's definitely worth the drive because it is so much fun to go. I actually went twice because I got called into work and uh, the first day I went, my daughter was going with me. I picked her up a little early from school and we got stuck in traffic. So by the time we got there, we practically had to turn around and leave because I had to go to work that evening at my theme park job. And so I just kind of looked around and kind of took stock of what we wanted to get. And the next day I went back by myself. I did film a little bit of footage on the outside of the building and a little bit inside so you can kind of get an idea of the layout. Then I will show you the books that I bought. So let me cut now to the video that I shot at the warehouse and I'll see you in a minute. So here we are at the Scholastic Warehouse and as you can see it's a very big place. We're going to enter over there. My daughter's already gone in. When you get here you have to check in and show your coupon which is your entrance or your registration. Okay, so we've checked in. Katie has already taken off running and we are inside the warehouse. First I'm going to go to the Build-A-Box area, but let me walk down the aisle. And basically, there's aisles like this and when we get on down here, they have the books out where you can pick. So you can, you know, find a book that you want. And grab it. They also have shopping carts. Back up a little bit. You can see. So each of those boxes are different books. There's Katie. <laughs> That's my daughter Katie. <laughs> Down here is the Build-A-Box area and basically anything in this area you can fill one of these you can fill one of these boxes and it's $25 for anything from this area you want to put in the box. So my daughter was with me the first day and like I said we didn't get to stay very long so then I went back again the next day so that I could stay a little bit longer and thankfully the traffic wasn't as bad the next day. The deals this year were not quite as good as last year. Last year for example if you had a book that had a red sticker then you got half off of that book. This year you only got 25% off of that uh, off of a red sticker price. In fact, I was looking at my receipt and I have one book that was a dollar and I did not get the 25% off. I probably was supposed to and for some reason it didn't go through or maybe a dollar was as cheap as it went. I don't know, but, uh, but that's okay. So a dollar is a great deal for a brand new book. So now I showed you in the footage the Build-A-Box area. I did not do the Build-A-Box this year. I have only done the Build-A-Box one time because there were several books that I really wanted and so it definitely made it worth my while to get them. 
but this year and last year I did not do build a box. It's twenty five dollars to build a box and you can put anything in it from that one section. Now if you just want one or two books from that section and you don't want to build a box then you get those books for half price. And then right outside of that area they had a bunch of tables that had half price books. And then the majority of the books up and down the aisles were 25 percent off. So that's where I got the majority of my books. I did get a few off the 50% off table. So as I come to those, I'll tell you which ones I got 50% off. But I'm going to kind of break it up by genre. The majority, of course, are middle grade books. But I did get a couple of nonfiction books and some books I got for gifts. And so I'll kind of break it up a little bit like that. Now, I showed you this one a while ago. This was my least expensive book. It had a sale price of a dollar, and it did not get marked down any farther than that. This is called Coffee House Angel by Suzanne Selfers, and it says it's by the. Uh, it says she is the author of Saving Juliet, which I think I have heard of that. Um, but but I had not heard of this book before. It just caught my eye because it had the dollar sticker, and uh, and I love coffee, so I thought it would be worth picking up. And this one I got because I think these weenie books by David Luer look hilarious. I have not read one yet. I do have one of them, and I probably will read it this summer. But um, this one is Wipeout of the Wireless Weenies and Other Warped and Creepy Tales. And it had the two fifty off sticker, which means it was $1.88. And it's by David Lubar. Then I got two books from the Kane Chronicles series by Rick Riordan. This one had a sticker of $7.99, which meant it was $6, which I thought was pretty good for a brand new hardback. I have the first one in this series in paperback, but they didn't have the paperback anywhere in the warehouse, so I decided to go ahead and get the hardback because I do want to read this series. I've listened to the first one on audio, and I'm going to read it again, so I wanted to go ahead and have the second one so that I would be ready to go as soon as I reread the first one. Then I also picked up this hardback copy of the Kane Chronicles Survival Guide. And it had a $5 sticker, which is trying to come off. This is a canvas covered book, so the sticker is not sticking to it good, uh, very well. It's kind of banged up a little bit. It looked like it was the last one in the warehouse. It's really neat. It's kind of like an envelope style book. And it's got some loose pieces here that, you, that can come out. It's a full color book. Kind of like the Percy Jackson guides that have the full color pictures. Um, and so I thought it would be really neat because I had a little trouble following the King Chronicles on audio, which is why I want to go back and reread it in print. And so I thought having this book would kind of help me keep the character straight and help me follow along a little bit better. And then I also got Gregor and the Code of Claw, which is book five in the Underland Chronicles by Suzanne Collins. I'm actually reading this book right now. I have a hardback copy that I originally got at a library book sale for 10 cents to give to my daughter's middle school library because they only have one other copy of that book and uh, but Katie wanted me to read it in print so I've been reading it and I'm about halfway done at this point so I'm gonna go ahead now and give that book to the librarian and I will probably finish the book in my own copy so I am excited to have it I only have books one three and five of this series and if they had had two and four I would have gotten them too because I really do want to collect the series and my other copies are in paperback which is why I wanted to go ahead and get this this was the last copy left in the warehouse they had one table of books that said last in stock so I knew this was going to be the only one I was going to find, and I was excited to get it. Now, the next few books are also going to be fantasy. I got Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians by Brandon Sanderson. I haven't read any of Brandon Sanderson's adult fantasy books. Um, I've heard Connor O'Brien talk about this book, and so I thought it looked fun, and I decided to pick it up. I also got books two and three of The Land of Stories. The first one is The Enchantress Returns and then a grim warning they did not have book one but i came home and looked and they do have book one on book outlet so i will be able to get book one from there and then i can read the series i have heard good things about this series i did not really plan to buy it but when i saw them there i decided to go ahead and get them one ended up being six dollars and one was 525 so i thought that was pretty good I've already read The Eighth Day by Diane K. Salerni, and I have book two, but I didn't have this one. And my daughter has also enjoyed both The Eighth Day and The Inquisitor's Mark. So I decided to go ahead and get a copy of The Eighth Day because she's lately been rereading a lot of books that she enjoys. So I decided to go ahead and pick this up. Now I have done a full review of this book on my channel, and I will try to remember to link it down below. So um, if you are interested in this, it is uh, it's about 
pretty much what it says in the title. There are some people who can experience an eighth day. It also has ties to Arthurian legends. Some of the people are descendants of Merlin and King Arthur and Lady of the Lake, and it's just really a good book. Now, I've read this also, Far, Far Away, by Tom McNeil. The main reason I bought this is because my daughter checked this out from the school library several months ago, and we've lost it. I don't know where it is. When we were cleaning up our house for her birthday, it must have gotten boxed up in a box somewhere, and I don't know where it is. So I'm still looking for it. I'm not giving up completely, but I decided to go ahead and pick this up while I could get it at a discount because our, um, I'm pretty sure that the librarian will happily accept a brand new copy as uh, the same as if I paid the money for a book and that would save her from having to reorder it. Uh, but if I do end up finding the school copy, then we'll just have our own copy. I got this by accident. I even called home and asked Katie, please go look on my bookshelf because I couldn't remember which ones of these I was missing. She goes, no, you have book nine. You don't have eight and ten. And I forgot to put this back on the shelf or leave it out at checkout. In fact, by the time I got to checkout, I was running really short on time because I also had to go to work at my theme park job that evening too. And... I just forgot about it so I ended up bringing it home and we'll probably you know my I've mentioned before in other videos my husband sells books online on eBay and so I will probably just give this to him to put on eBay and then the next a few I got for my daughter Katie even though she's well past this reading level she still enjoys the diary of the wimpy kid books she is diary of a wimpy kid old school by Jeff Kinney I'm not sure what number this is but Katie has the whole series and she's been collecting them in paperback so I wanted to go ahead and get this for her to complete her collection uh, these are just fun books I've read about three of them and I plan to read a couple more of them this summer this is the prank list it's the sequel to the dirt diaries and and I'm not sure I don't want to mispronounce the author's name so I'll just spell it out right here and Katie picked up the dirt diaries at book fair last year I believe and so this is the sequel to that so I got this for her this is graceful by Wendy Mass this is one of the Willow Falls series Katie has only read the first one which is 11 birthdays and there are about three others in between that they didn't have they were sold out of and um, I do want to read this series and I think Katie wants to read it as well so so I just went ahead and picked this up. Now I only got a couple of nonfiction books, but I did get Life in Motion by Misty Copeland. This is a memoir. I've seen her story on one of the TV news magazines, maybe 60 Minutes or something, and it just looks really interesting. So I wanted to go ahead and pick it up, plus it had a $3 special on it, which means the final price was $2.25. So this looks really good. I would like to read it, and I don't know if Katie wants to read it or not, but I, um, I've heard about it, seen the book, and thought it looked really good. Another nonfiction book I got for Katie has some of her favorite stars in it. Backstage Pass, Hollywood Stars, and it had a five dollar sticker, so that means it was uh, so that means it was three seventy five, and it's just just kind of a magazine type book of uh, a lot of the stars from Divergent and Hunger Games and other other movies like that. This one I got for my sister eventually. I will probably read it first. This is another Kate Morton book. I have found two of her books recently, and they had this one on the half price table. This is The Distant Hours, and it was originally $15, and it was on the half price table, which meant it was $7.50. $7.50 is the most I paid for any book, and I think I got three books that were $7.50 each. And then I was so excited to get this. This was also on the half price table, although I didn't find it on the half price table. I found it down in the stacks, but uh, then later I saw that they had it on the half price table too. 75 plus reading strategies by Danny Brassel. I have seen and heard Danny Brassel in person speaking and he's amazing. He is a reading advocate, reading coach, and a speaker. He goes around to different school districts, I guess, and speaks. And I had the opportunity to go and hear him speak a couple of years ago when the, I guess it was the Title I facilitator from my daughter's elementary school was invited to come and bring two parents so I had the privilege of going and I loved it oh my goodness this man has some wonderful amazing ideas for helping children read and it was just it was just wonderful so I was really really excited to get his book I didn't even realize that he had a book and I'm really excited to read this because when I'm subbing I usually do like to talk to kids about reading and sometimes I do a better job than others so I'm hoping to get some strategies and tips for how to advocate reading especially in middle school and high school because by that age 
you know, they have so much homework and other work to do that the most they will read sometimes is reading that they have to do. And I really want to encourage and advocate reading among teenagers and um, because it's just, I find that there's so many teenagers who aren't reading anymore. So I'm hoping this will give me some tips for that. A couple of other gifts that I got. This is Dinosaurs, the Bare Bones. This is created by Basher and written by Dan Green. And this is a nonfiction book on a kid level and it has really good descriptions of dinosaurs. This is for my husband's youngest niece, who I think is only four, but she'll definitely grow into this. She's obsessed with dinosaurs. He loves dinosaurs, and so I thought I would pick this up for her. And then here's just a little minion journal that I got for one of Katie's friends who loves minions, and so it's got the elastic strap where you can um, close it up, and it's really cute. It's got minions on the and papers and then minions at the bottom of each page it's really cute all right so that was 20 books that I got at the Scholastic Warehouse sale when all the sale prices were added up it came to 101 and some change and then I had the coupon you have to go online before the sale and register and you get what they call a fast pass which has a coupon on it for $10 off of a $25 purchase or $25 off of a hundred dollar purchase so when it was all said and done I came out at right at $75 so for 20 brand new books I think that's pretty good so I was excited to show them to you in fact it doesn't hardly seem like it's been almost a year but the very first book haul that I ever did on my channel was the Scholastic Warehouse sale from last year now I'm not quite to a year anniversary yet on my channel because at the time, uh, the, the sale is every May, and I don't think I uploaded my first video until July, but I had my last year's books hanging around in a bag <laughs> waiting until I got my act together to get, a, uh, to get my video filmed, and then, of course, it took me a while to get it edited and uploaded and to figure out how to do all that, but still, it's been almost a year since I uploaded my first video. So if you want to see what I got at the Scholastic Warehouse sale last year, Please feel free to take a look at that video. I will link it in the description down below as well. So I guess that's it for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.